What's cracking on my critically thinking bipedal hominid brothers and sisters out there in the audience this afternoon? I wanted to bring you some information and I have a lot of information to cover so if I seem kind of manic when I'm talking and I'm trying to get the information out there to you all, I'm not. I'm very calm and collected but the only way I can get the information out is to get it out quickly. So um, forgive me, I have a lot of information to talk, talk about. And uh, another user, J. Douglas Fisher, uh, did a vlog on this and, and touched upon some things and left some number, numbers to, to contact your legislators. Now I'm going to talk about some additional information um, and uh, basically all I'm doing is providing you with the information. I'm going to let you research it yourself or look at it yourself. Take what I say, take the information, make an informed decision for yourself. Um, and let's get a, you know, we can, I'm, I'm more than happy to get a dialogue started on this. And, and if you have additional information, please feel free to provide it to me. Video response, comment, whatever. And I'm calling on my brothers and sisters from the north up in Canada to provide me with any information that they have. Because obviously they're looking at it from a different perspective. But I'm going to look at it from uh, both perspectives here a little bit. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the Canada U.S. Civil Assistance Program, CAP. And basically what that is, is is an integration of the two militaries of Canada and the United States to help support uh, the, other, the other's military in um, cases of uh, uh, civil support operations, uh, which include floods, forest fires, hurricanes, earthquakes, and the effects of a terrorist attack. Now, civil unrest goes in there too. Let's not kid, kid ourselves because they're, they're already, we, you know, uh, Jay Douglas mentioned the, the, the food riots under the guise of food riots. Now that may be the case. I mean, Ted Tenebrous, for some of you that know him, made a video about some of the, um, the global uh, drought problems that are happening, which is going to affect um, food production all over the world, and especially in the United States this year. So we could be looking at food shortage, shortages, but we have to be able to take all of the information try to try to uh, look at it from a 360 degree perspective if we can and make uh, intelligent decisions about it now um, I don't believe for a second that it's just about um, food shortage uh, you know we have to be a civil civil unrest is a pretty goddamn general term um, so basically it, it, it's uh, that's what we're talking about here now it mentions um, this uh, the support for the the law enforcement operations is not covered in this plan. Now it's it says it says in here that basically this um, military forces will augment another country's military force. This will not be military force that will augment police force and civil um, authorities. And they'll ha the civil authorities will have no authority over this. This is going to be military dictating where other military goes, which still isn't good. But it mentions that the um, the law enforcement operations is not covered in the pl in this plan, but in the Canada United States Combined Defense Plan (CDP). Now, I like J. Dus J. J. Douglas Fisher mentioned couldn't find anything on the United States Canada Combined Defense Plan or CDP. Sorry, Canada United States. So. You know, uh, the, <laughs> where's the information? So now, also in looking at this cap, I was trying to look for some information from a Canadian perspective. So I found this really cool um, website that uh, it mentions. Uh, it's Canadian.org and it, uh, backslash integrate this, like integrate this, like yeah, this. So. Um, it says challenging the security and prosperity partnership of North America. So, obviously, there, it's it's a it's an anti SPP. Um, it says U.S. Northern Command has posted portions of a civil assistance program signed with Canada Command on February 14th, which we already know, to its website. Although it appears to be missing as many as 23 annexes, there is a reference to Annex W that are still classified. In other words, 23 annexes, and this reference to Annex W are apparently classified in this unclassified document. Now, I have a whole bunch of links that I'm going to put in the sidebar and I have the actual um, links to the documents, the PDFs that you can download and save. I did. Um, so it goes on to talk about a couple of different points about these, um, 
how it's uh, cross-border missions talk about to mitigate damage to property. Well, it says it's never a good sign when there's no limit on what that means, no definition. What are the parameters of damage to property? It doesn't actually define that in this. Um, the end state clause, uh, it mentions that uh, there doesn't seem to be a requirement in there for military personnel from one country to leave simply because they are asked to do so. Basically, the militaries will decide when the mission is over, and they will decide when to leave. So any civil or governmental authorities don't have any authority there. Um, that's what I'm taking from it. So <laughs> it's there's a lot of suspect stuff in there. Um, and I, I looked at the I found this website that uh, it was it's uh, the WilsonCenter.org and it talks about the outlook for Canada Canada U.S. defense cooperation. It goes on to mention the binational planning group. Now. Depending on what you know about the bi binational planning group, it's supposed to be this consultative group of, I guess, military um, advisors, and uh, they m were supposed to make the decisions about uh, why this is a good idea uh, to come up with these plans for the civil assistance group. And they released this report, and it's very nice and pretty, and it looks good, and I'll I'll link it. Um, but it basically supports um, this plan. And um, I think it's 23 pages. I didn't read the whole thing. Um, but also, I found interesting at the bottom of this article, talking about this, um, the Woodrow Wilson International Center here also has two articles, or two reports, um, one called Threat Perceptions in the U.S. and Canada, where it actually mentions statistics about, uh, about Americans that want tighter control, uh, monitoring, things of that nature. Um, I did, wasn't able to actually uh, verify any of the statistics, so I'm really not sure. But please look at the please look at all of those reports, all the PDF uh, file stuff. Look at. There's another one called Security and Sovereignty: Renewing NORAD, which basically talks about the need for expansion of NORAD from air and space to land and sea as well. Basically, covering the whole scope um, for NORAD to have a, a, a lot of uh, authority and power. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Also, another little tidbit. Now, one of the main places that this came from, um, and you can take it for what you want, it came from, I think, Infowars.com. Uh, um, and uh, I, I tried looking, you know, there was a lot of websites that had this, but it all led back to Infowars. Um, the Department of the Army and the Army Contracting Agency uh, out of Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, uh, has a request on fedbizops.gov, which is federal business opportunities, um, for riot equipment. And it's asking for private businesses, um, outfitters and such, to provide riot equipment to them. Um, and I think they're looking to spend about $6 million. Hard polythylene shells, interior leg brace support shin guards can safely withstand a substantial blow to the leg from a non-ballistic weapons or flying degree. Upper knee stabilizing straps with protective padding, adjustable removable foot protectors, padded outer ankle protectors, all kinds of stuff. So basically the military is looking for a whole lot of riot gear. So here we go back to this talk about the civil unrest and the military being employed there um, to police citizens. Um, so we have to wonder to what degree is this going to happen? You know, it, it, it has, it's, it's a reason, it's, there's, uh, um, there's a logical progression to, 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 you know, uh, wonder what, <laughs> what's going to happen here. We just need to, to work it out. We need to figure it out. Um, so that's just a little, uh, tidbit of information that I thought I'd mention to you as well. And this, you know, one thing that I wanted to mention very very clearly is this uh, I found this article that mentions that you know this was um, you know this received virtually no uh, American media or Canadian media attention and this plan this civil assistance plan was not submitted to Congress for approval and it was not um, Congress didn't pass a law or treaty that specifically authorized the military agreement to combine uh, the two militaries so where's the oversight that's another thing that I want to know um, so let's, you know, I wanted to get a discourse started on this, um, talk about it a little bit. 
I'm going to put a lot of links on the side. You guys tell me what you think. You can respond during vid or just in the comments. And um, that's about it for now. So, peace, everybody. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up!